The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm Insun Kim from Deng and Cope Engineers, San Francisco. So. And uh, my uh, presentation topic today is like seismic assessment and lateral feed of existing RC buildings. So, and I like to acknowledge my, the co-author of uh, like SP paper also who helped with like uh, preparing this presentation. The, the Gerrit Hagan, who is one of the engineers at, uh, at our LA office. So like in the previous uh, kind of presentation, you saw all these good state of, state of art researches. And, now what I'm going to talk about is something we have been done like in practice the last five years. So how basically what we found like in terms of deficiencies in the existing buildings and what kind of strengthening method we used. So with that, so today's presentation objective is kind of case studies of 10 buildings, 10 RC buildings, retrofit in the past five years based on AC 30, 31 and 41. So if you are familiar with existing site, uh, like existing building code, there are kind of a, like a three codes that we, we have been used in last five years. Like one is ASC 3103, which is kind of about seismic evaluation of existing building. And then the other one is ASC 4106, which is about seismic rehabilitation. And now we have, we will have a, pretty soon, like ASC 4113, which is kind of combined version of ASC 31 and 41. So which a document, a standard dealing with both like evaluation and retrofit of existing buildings. So what I'm going to do is I kind of go through overview of deficiencies, kind of like major deficiencies we found in this like 10 RC buildings. And then just to give you a brief idea about what kind of strength techniques we used in the field like uh, to that, like uh, five RC buildings. And then based on that experience, like uh, like uh, kind of make some recommendation about improvements in the future ASC 41 document, which like uh, uh, ACI 369 committee is working on very hard, very hard to kind of improve this concrete chapter of ASC 41. So a little bit about Degen Cop engineers, like uh, we are uh, like a, uh, West Coast firm, like we have five op offices along the west coast of USA and they founded in 1940s, about 110 employees. And then we offer like a full structural engineering service, but we kind of see as ourselves as a kind of engineers who specialize in seismic engineering field. So what I did is like I send out kind of email to engineers in these five offices and uh, like a bug, like bug them and get, provide me some information about their projects they worked on like the uh, past five years. So I can kind of uh, come up with some, not statistics, but some idea about what we have done in like in the past five years to strengthen these deficiency buildings. So uh, with that, uh, and I, I would like to note that like this is, I cannot say this is kind of common practice that we like engineers do for the strength in this type of buildings. This is kind of more like a, uh, it is what like Degen Cope engineers did. So it is not represent the common practice. And also it looks like it is statistics, but it is not really statistical data. It is only 10 buildings, but hopefully it gives it some perspective to you guys like about what is out there actually like so. So among the 10 buildings, like uh, the year of construction of the buildings are kind of from 1940s to 1970s. So uh, they are kind of built to be poor in the San Fernando scale before we kind of adopt the seismic detailing. So they are kind of fully de uh, detailed buildings basically. And then in terms of building occupancy, like uh, there are six hospitals and then like schools, warehouses, and offices. The reason we have like the more hospitals in uh, in this group 
Uh, but by the way, all these 10 buildings are located in San, like uh, California area. So like the uh, state of California actually, like uh, there's, there, there's mandatory requirements from San, uh, like state of California. You have to seismic evaluation, uh, you have to perform seismic evaluation and retrofit of uh, like uh, hospital buildings. So that is the kind of reason we have like the, we deal with hospital buildings more than the other like, like the types of buildings. And then like number of stories, like from one story to 10 stories. So it is kind of like the low to mid rise buildings. And type of lateral force listing system, this is very interesting. Like uh, because among 10 buildings, even though it is not statistical, uh, statistic at all, but you have, uh, you see nine buildings has a sure walls and then five buildings has a moment frame. And then only one building has the only moment frame in there as their letter of listing system. So I think engineers are like strengthening this type of old buildings. We saw shore building more often than uh, like a moment frame buildings. I, I think I can safely say that like, uh, yeah, so shore, shore buildings are more common in like old existing buildings than like moment frame buildings. And about the analysis techniques that we used to evaluate and strengthen these uh, buildings, like uh, we, uh, four buildings, we only did uh, like a linear, static or linear dynamic analysis. And uh, like six buildings, we did both linear and nonlinear analysis. And two of them, we did uh, like nonlinear dynamic analysis, which is response spectral analysis, uh, li like, li like the time history analysis, basically. And when we do like the linear analysis, we use kind of a software platform like uh, ETAPS or SEP2000. And when we need to do like non-linear analysis, we often use like a Perform 3D. I think it is uh, like much simpler than OpenSys and like engineer can like uh, more comfortably use like a Perform 3D for non-linear analysis rather than like OpenSys. So, uh, now I'm going to talk about a little bit about deficiencies we found in these 10 buildings. Like, uh, so it is uh, all classic deficiencies, like in terms of a global deficiency, like the torsional and vertical irregularities and the uh, pounding with the adjacent, uh, like adjacent buildings, which is kind of seismic joint issue. We can solve the stories. And then this is more like a element specific deficiencies, which is kind of non-ductile non concrete frames, like a captive column like that. And the large shear wall, shear wall openings, like uh, there are like large openings middle of a shear wall, and then or middle of diaphragm, and then unconfined boundary elements in the shear walls, and then insufficient diaphragm strength, especially like connection strength, diaphragm to walls connection or diaphragm to frame connections or something like that, and and many more. And if you uh, all, there is also like SP paper, like a special publication paper. Yeah, like, here, like in, in, in that the paper, like we have, I provide a table that shows all the deficiencies found in each building. So, and among all deficiencies, I kind of take out more like, a, I would call major deficiencies, which means I found them more often in this uh, type of RC building. So one is kind of among 10 buildings, I found like a vertical irregularity in seven buildings and diaphragm capacity problem in seven buildings non ductile column problem in five buildings and like a torsional irregularity problem in three buildings. And the vertical discontinuity, like the, there's a, like a shear wall that does not go all the way to the foundation or, or like a, uh, that type of vertical like a irregularity is one thing, but another vertical discontinuity or vertical irregularity is kind of this kind of podium structure. So basically, uh, like uh, I think four, uh, like four buildings among ten buildings has this kind of a vertical, uh, like podium basically. So the first couple of stories are like has a like large floor plan, and then you have like the tower kind of sticking out from the uh, like that podium. And that typically that uh, tower is not centered on the podium; it is more like a or like a one corner. So it creates a torsion problem at the podium, podium level and. Sometimes the lateral positioning system is not continuous all the way to the, the foundation of the podium because podium has a usually like the retaining wall, uh, like a, or like structural wall at the like a perimeter. So people think uh, diaphragm. If diaphragm, I don't know if people think about diaphragm, but the, if diaphragm has enough capacity, they can the post lateral post can be transferred to this perimeter wall or so podium. But uh, it is not likely to happen. So for in the old buildings. And the other thing is like uh, the other deficiency we often see is this kind of diaphragm to wall connection issue. 
So I think in the old days, we don't really think about diaphragm that much. And like uh, I always like to emphasize that like the letter, like a horizontal lateral post-lifting system, which is diaphragm and cord and collectors are as important as like the vertical lateral post-lifting system, which is walls and top frames and via braces and and so on, because in order to like the transfer seismic load from the like the floor to the vertical existing system, that uh, like a uh, diaphragm is very critical. So engineers often looking that connection very closely. And but the problem is that in old days we didn't really engineers didn't really think about that connection. So uh, if you're looking at here, it is very little bit hard to see. There are number three towers at 18 inch on center, like the, between the diaphragm to wall connection. That does not provide enough force trans the seismic force transfer from the diaphragm to wall. And uh, if you think about like our ordinary design, like we use the R factor for only for the vertical lateral force leasing system. And if in this kind of case, like uh, you can get yield from the diaphragm first before even you like uh, before you develop the like the clear vertical lateral force leasing system. So it is kind of a critical connection for us. So we have. We saw this a lot, and we like to kind of, we need to strengthen this thing like all the time. And the classic exa examples of the captive columns and the, like a facade of the building, like perimeter of the building. And then one of the other thing I like to point out is like, a, because when you see the like a pace of the building, people want, architect wants the plush pace. So there is nothing really concentric joint there. Like always, like beam and column joints are like eccentric, like uh, no, yeah, eccentric, yeah. So just like you see, look, let me see, yeah, yeah just like you can see here, like uh, you can see this, this, this is plan view of the column and spandrel beam connection, and you don't see it very often it is framing is concentric. It's always like eccentric connection. And the other thing you can find out about this building elevation is you can see a lot of openings in the existing ones, this axis opening. So there are a lot of openings in the existing one, and you can see here, like you can have only a little pier, the resisting kind of a lateral pulse. And now uh, I'm going to talk about, like, uh, based on what the deficiencies we found in, the, in this evaluation phase, like I like to talk about a little bit about literary techniques. So like uh, what the literary technique we use is kind of uh, adding new vertical resisting for uh, uh, like, uh, Lateral force lifting system, which is like the shear walls or like steel braces in our C building, and uh, like the strengthening of a uh, like horizontal lateral force lifting system, which is diaphragm, and also like a strengthening of existing gravity force lifting system that Mahid uh, just mentioned in the previous uh, uh, presentation, and also strengthening of uh, actually existing vertical like lateral force lifting, lifting system, which means. Uh, application of FRP or shock grid overlay on existing walls or e just uh, like a strengthening existing kind of a, like a lateral force lifting system and then provide uh, like the larger joint in the two structures. And you might wonder why like I have like uh, 11 buildings right here for the instead of 10 uh, because like uh, actually we among 10 buildings uh, we add a new sure or new or new steel brace frame to nine buildings but uh, two buildings that has uh, like both shear wall and like a uh, brace frame, so that is kind of uh, give me like 11. So it was not <laughs> a mistake. So le let me talk about about like a addition of a vertical resisting system a little bit. And uh, interestingly, like uh, five buildings has uh, like the steel, some kind of steel member. Like the actually these days we use BRB buckling restraint brace more than like the like the typical steel brace frame because it is very affordable these days. And then uh, have a reliable performance, and then also we add uh, like the shear walls. And for example, if this is kind of a shear wall, addition of a new shear wall in the existing building. And the one thing we I like to note is like we typically add new, we have to add new foundation to the new shear wall. If you add new vertical lateral force lifting system, it's not just infilling kind of some openings. It is actually we need to add a new foundation, and sometimes it is more trouble to convince like a client to, okay, we need to lift off the uh, slab on grade and uh, put the new foundation. And uh, there is uh, like under, undermining issues or like uh, it's kind of complicated how to put the pudding for the new body collateral for listing system is kind of a, a big challenge for us. And uh, another thing is kind of adding uh, steel BRB. So yeah, as you see among 
like 11, 10 buildings, like more like the six, uh, five buildings has this like a steel system. So you, when we strengthening this uh, kind of existing concrete building with kind of steel, we have to think about interaction and also this one has kind of a, like a large pudding too, like the new puddings with some pies. So, and yeah, this is kind of summary of a new addition of a new vertical level post lifting system. So like add shear walls or like BRBs or like a brace frames and then new foundations are often required. And then connection to, as I mentioned earlier, connection to diaphragm is kind of really critical. And also, uh, interestingly, because when diaphragm does not have enough capacity then, like, uh, to span between two like, uh, lines of the vertical lateral force listing system, actually in order to protect diaphragm, we have to put the, another shear wall or like the brace frame at the middle of two like, uh, existing vertical like, lateral force listing system. So like, uh, like I, said, I like to note that diaphragm actually trigger addition of a new like, lateral force listing system. And then next kind of a literary technique is more like the about addition of addition and strengthening of a horizontal lateral force system, which is diaphragm. And we often use like the steel for the strengthening diaphragm, uh, and basically adding collector, uh, steel plate collector, and then also uh, like they do some concrete collector, concrete collector, or like the in, like a uh, strengthening connection between vertical and lateral, vertical and horizontal lateral force lifting system with con new concrete connection too. So yeah, this is kind of plan view. Uh, uh, so we kind of, uh, this is kind of sure wall underneath this floor level and then we add this kind of collector so we can collect force from the diaphragm to the, this vertical lateral force lifting system. And one thing, yeah, I'm sorry not to provide so many pictures of actually buildings and building components because like a client wants to like kind of hesitant to release that kind of information. So or, like it is good to collect this kind of information if I promise that I'm, going, I'm not gonna release any building specific information. So I'm just showing building models and like, a, like a, some portion of the plans and details, but that's the uh, place, uh, yeah, I apologize for that. And then, so addition of strength, uh, addition and strength, strength and like a like a diaphragm is very important. For and then actually, you see these diaphragm strengthening in all ten buildings, and then improved connection between the vertical and horizontal layer post listing system is really important. And then, collector elements are often used using steel plate, and then like anchor it to concrete columns or concrete beam. Uh, con I'm sorry, concrete beams. So. You, you have to think, we have to think about what is the interaction between steel and concrete when we do this type of strengthening, just like when we put the brace frame in the vertical force resisting system. And then next uh, strengthening technique is the, like the strengthening of existing gravity force resisting system. And we often found it is really important to provide the gravity, uh, like a strengthening, uh, prevent the collapse of the building, just like uh, uh, Mahel present, presented in the first presentation. So what we so basically what we want to do is when the lateral position is kind of a laterally uh, uh, like the drifting, we want to have like a vertical lateral uh, like a gravity system which is column, typical column and beams have enough capacity to enough deformation capacity to drift them stay along with the lateral position system. So basically, we opt, the often we what we do is provide FRP confinement. Now for the uh, for the like uh, uh, increasing increasing the like deformation horizontal deformation capacity lateral deformation capacity of these gravity columns, and also sometimes we open put some kind of steel channels or underneath of the uh, like a slab, so actually provide some kind of catch mechanism when gravity failure occurs on the slab beam like the slab to column connection or something like that, we often provide some kind of supplementary like a connections or support for the gravity support. And then maybe this is last and then like, a, so and then strengthening of the existing vertical listing system, which is kind of a, a adding FRP on the existing walls. And then also we kind of tend to put some anchors at the end and also doing some shock grid on the existing wall. Yeah, this is only board I have <laughs> in this presentation. And so basically, strengthening of the existing vertical system means like the, uh, put some shear walls and the, with chakra overlay and then like a fiber reinforced polymer overlay and then sometimes we opening shear wall in too. And 
And then I think this is my last slide. And then I like to make, uh, this is my kind of concluding remarks with some like a recommendation of improving like future ASC 41. As you see in previous kind of a case study uh, that I presented, like there are a lot of uh, concrete members actually strengthened with uh, like materials other than concrete, which is like FRP or STA. So we need more uh, like information regarding how to model these members with strengthen with like uh, materials other than concrete. I think the previous uh, previ previous presentation given by Jose is kind of covering one of that topic. And also like the, some, like for example, steel collectors, collectors strengthened with steel, we need to analyze how to kind of uh, uh, like uh, analyze these kind of members. And then we need more information about like the diaphragm and collector connection. And, and right now ASC 41 says it is like a uh, works similar to kind of concrete shear wall and it might not, and we might need more information about the connections and how they perform. And then also we need a kind of more like the guidelines about how we kind of evaluate the gravity system, not the secondary element, but gravity system as they said. And then lastly, like uh, uh, this ASC Polyon is uh, originally developed for the pushable analysis when you do nonlinear non analysis, but people often use, and we, uh, we use uh, like the nonlinear dynamic analysis in two, two buildings among 10 buildings. So we, might, we need more information, guidelines regarding how to model like uh, this uh, concrete component or strengthen the concrete component in for nonlinear dynamics, for it, like the strength and like uh, uh, so stiffness degradation and all hysteresis and all this kind of stuff. So with that, any questions?